I had a band in South London and my drummer, Tony Chapman, played with the beginnings of the Stones. He came to me and said, uh, the bass player's left. Do you want to come up and have a try? Looking in my diary, on Friday the 7th of December 1962, I went up to the Weatherby Arms pub in World's End, Chelsea, entered through the side door, met Ian Stewart, who was very nice and friendly. He introduced me to Mick there, who was also quite friendly, actually. I was then introduced to Brian and Keith, who were up at the bar, and they were very cool and distant and, and, and showed me little interest. We got my equipment out and set it up, and everybody was interested all of a sudden because I had a huge bass amp, which I'd made. I had an AC30 Vox amp and another smaller amp, a Watkins Westminster. I said, you can use them, this is mine. They had all horrible amps, so they were very happy about that. I bought a round of drinks for everyone and offered them cigarettes, and of course they were jumped upon immediately because they all smoked, but they couldn't afford them. And then Mick turned around and asked me if I knew any black blues artists. The only names I knew that were similar to blues artists were Chuck Berry and Fats Domino. So he asked me who else I knew, and I talked about the Coasters, Jerry Lee Lewis, Eddie Cochran, Johnny Burnett, Lloyd Price, Sam Cooke, people like that. And I got a very strong look of distaste from everyone. <laughs> they were a bit too rock and roll for them, I think, at the time. But um, in later years, of course, they all got to love those guys. We rehearsed some slow Jimmy Reed songs and pretty authentic blues, but they still kind of ignored me and made it clear to me that I wasn't really the right kind of person. I thought the general opinion of the boys was really good amps, bass playing's nothing special, uh, but we keep him so that we can use the amps. But they were con artists at the time and they, they, they took ages to be friendly with people. They asked me to come to the next rehearsal and I agreed. And we returned to their flat and I left all my equipment there, which was a dodgy thing because that flat was disgusting. I mean, it was filthy. The chairs had three legs for people they didn't like, you know. Anyway, Tony and I left and drove back to South London uh, later that evening and I probably got to bed about two in the morning like I usually do.